because this is something that I think about when I think about um, open relationships, polyamory, um, these types of things. Part of me is very intrigued, and, and I uh, and I sense on a deeper level that this makes more sense for human beings. Mm-hmm. And I know this from like an evolutionary perspective as well, but. I am still deeply embedded within this cultural narrative as much as Mm -hmm. I can flippantly say, yeah, yeah, it's bullshit or whatever. You know, that doesn't change the fact that I've grown up in a culture that's, I've been inundated with conditioning and ideas about what masculinity is, what femininity is, how relationships are supposed to play out. You know, you model your relationships on what you see other people do and, you know, all of that. Um, But I, but I imagine that when you were, you know, stressed and challenged because of this, this separation, this divorce, and that triggered this exploration, um, that you ended up in this village and you're looking at it with fresh eyes, um, and probably a much more open mindset than you would have had previously. Um, so I guess to just ask that question, you know, what, what did you discover when you arrived in Tamara? Well, Tamara is a different planet. (laughs) That's, that's a, best way I can describe. Um, okay. I mean, it, it just, uh, you know, the kind of snapshot is that it is, it's a community of about 200 in Southern Portugal. Uh, it's comprised mainly of Germans actually, who okay. <laughs> initially began this community in late, in the late seventies, um, through the uh, relationship of Dieter Doom, Sabine Lichtenfels and Charlie Rainier. There were three, three friends who decided they wanted to initially make a kind of like on the heels of the student protest movements and, you know, the whole 60s momentum to create a new university for a lot of the new ideas that were coming in. Uh, and when they got together with people and drove them in to say, hey, you know, let's let's build this university, they quickly realized how, you know, just getting along was a real issue. And then they, I think they realized that, well, wait a second, you know, we can have all these lofty ideas about building utopia, but unless we can figure out how to be together, uh, then you know there's no there's no chance of building um, a culture to replace the current one, uh, and so they set about essentially putting these bigger issues of love and sexuality, partnership, um, village, you know, belonging, like trauma, all these things in the center, and then said you know whatever happens that will stay, you know for the I think it was initially like a three year commitment with a smaller group, locked themselves in like a farmhouse in in the Black Forest in Germany. Uh, and they basically said, yeah, we're going to stay no matter what comes up. And from that commitment, that deep commitment to each other um, and the commitment to move through, you know, all of the shadow and all those things, I think it really formed this fertile soil and the seed for the community that eventually began growing while they, um, you know, began offering different processes um, that they started to develop and research. Uh, ultimately to then shift to southern Portugal, uh, to then then it would be called Tamera, which actually means the source of the source, um, because it's centered around a beautiful spring there, which uh, the the Sabine, as I mentioned, you know, she had this dream of of this community, and and in the dream she found this this place, and when she came across it, you know, in her travels, she knew that was it. Uh, and so, yeah, the community has grown now to about 200, um, where they um, close down for the winter season, where they do a lot of internal research and, and work. And then the summer, they open up to the world and they invite people from all over the world to take different programs and to, you know, experience the field and and really um, kind of be a, be a gathering place and a, and a healing place for, you know, so much of these places within, you know, the particularly global activists and peace workers where they don't have the opportunity to actually, you know, be held in a wider field of trust and support to touch those deeper places that, you know, I think from being able to be integrated, like I mentioned, you know, many activists and change makers, you know, they burn out because they're just focused on the cause and don't realize that, you know, they, they can't really go the distance unless they integrate those places in themselves um, particularly around, you know, love and sexuality and partnership. So, you know, they've really built an, like an alternate universe there. Like, and the ways of relating in some ways are so foreign. Um, but like you said, it, you know, when you can intuit a sense of, well, maybe humans are better suited to be this way. Um, you know, when it's like, it's only possible though, if it's within a certain field that supports that kind of relating, you know, it's a, so, it's, so I guess to me, the question isn't, um, sort of what's the, I don't know what to say, more, most natural way of relating or 
what's the correct way, but more like what is the, what are the circumstances where um, the liberation of eros of life energy is allowed to flourish, and how can we make that actually nourish the community, you know, and the land um, at large, which is really what they've managed to unlock there.